Continuing on from my videos about the Otogiri Soul movie, sound novel games, Kamaitachi no Yoru, and Kamaitachi no Yoru 2, the time has now come to look over the Kamaitachi no Yoru TV movie, first aired on TBS on July 3rd, 2002. I have to assume that it was made as a sort of a cross-promotion for the sequel game, which was released two weeks later on July 18th, the special edition of which came with the movie on DVD, along with a mouse pad and a key strap. With the aid of the bonus materials on the DVD, let's take a closer look at Kamaitachi no Yoru, the TV movie. いや、僕は基本的にオリジナルで何でも書きたい方なんですけど、まあ、あの、今回こういう機会があって、まあ、どこまでこう変えていいのかとかもちょっといろいろ考えたんですけど、まあ、結構自分の世界に近いところだったん
and the crew only had 10 minutes to get all the equipment on board. Only the front car was reservable, so they had to work alongside the regular passengers. They had to keep the tunnels on the route in mind when they shot. But they also used them to their advantage. The date scene between the beauty and the beast was filmed in the city of youth, Harajuku. It was supposed to be a sunny scene, but unfortunately on the day it was raining. Here Satake stares at the cafe girl, but then we see that he's actually looking at the script held by a staff member. あの、ちょっとその、it was nice of them to feature Knope where the game was shot, even if they couldn't use it for the movie for whatever reason. I remember when I was there that I saw a signed plate thing from back then. I suppose they shot the scene in May? Though it would be strange that Knope would be fully booked in any season other than winter. I was there in November and it was empty. The car scene where Shiro Osano playing the hotel owner drives the guests to the hotel was filmed in Nanmoku, Gunma Prefecture. Having to get a lot of equipment inside the car to film was tricky for the staff. A van pulled the van with the actors along. And they used a double for the shot of the front seat. So Sano got to rest during most of this scene. The hotel was also in Nanmoku and was old and run down, but little by little, the benches for instance and the facade was repainted, and by the entrance the ground was dug up and bricks laid. They rebuilt the entrance so it looked like a hotel and planted flowers, and it was all done in three days. ホテルで眠れなくなったり、電気つけっぱなしにしないと眠れなくなったりしましたけど。あの、the dinner scene had a lot of people in frame at the same time, so a lot could go wrong. And here where the owner comes out with the food, they had to do three retakes and put out new food each time. Ah, 
何色作ったんですか今結局固形で<笑>全部でですねえー、っと1回2回3回4回3回だから30色分ですはい And it wasn't over yet, as the final shot of Tanaka demonstratively biting into the food. Yeah, I was like, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the h o In Tanaka's death scene, the actor, who is also named Tanaka by the way, got to learn the difficulties of playing a dead body. The storm raging outside the window of the previous death scene was made with a tank containing three tons of water and a really big fan. The lightning was simulated by the lighting people and sound effects added on later. Yui Asaka, a former idol, played Keiko, whose mind by this time is deteriorating. As seen when she goes up out of the tub to go home, naked. But as Yui walked out, she walked behind the camera and a body double walked in. Alright, time to head to Spoiler Town. The three men, previously four, come in from the storm and they break the news of Mikimoto's death. They discuss some more, and Midori starts asking about people's real names, which makes Satoke visibly nervous, and he changes the subject when they get to him. But this discussion doesn't lead to any new revelations, and Kayama gets fed up and goes back to his room, and the rest follow his lead. Satoke tells Mari that he didn't get a note, which he didn't want to say earlier out of fear that they would suspect him. He also tells of a kid he knew in childhood, and how they accidentally burned down a rabbit coop, only Satoke didn't come forward, and the kid, Toru, became bullied. The guilt of which came back to him as the presence of the school reminded him. Then things spiral further as they find Midori dead as well, and Keiko in the bathroom, hacking Tanaka's body into pieces and flushing it down the toilet. Kayama is confronted by his quite angry wife, who found out that he was cheating on her with Midori, and she killed her. And him too, by the looks of it. Toshio, having looked at Mikimoto's footage from earlier when Tanaka died, confronts Satake over Tanaka having known him, and the suspicion does turn to him, and he gets knocked out. He awakens locked up in a storage room, and he is confronted by the ghostly kid from earlier. Then the hotel owner comes in, and looks like he's going to kill him, but sets him free instead, then dies. Mari comes in and says Toshio killed everyone. Satake tries to escape with Mari now that the storm is over, but he finds that the bridge has collapsed. This is when Mari reveals the truth. Satake didn't betray Toshio, it was the other way around, and in his loneliness he created an imaginary friend, who is now taking physical form, somehow, and killed everyone, and wants him to finish it by taking his revenge on Toshio. Satake rejects the mission, but still runs to him, finding the bodies of the others along the way. He finds Toshio hiding in a classroom when he tries to get him to apologize for the burning incident, but he says he doesn't remember. 
Satake, then seemingly controlled by Mari, kills Toshu. I think this movie worked pretty well as a mystery thriller, and I liked the psychological twist with Satake and Toshio, but at the same time not. I liked where they were going with the imaginary friend, doing what he's too afraid or too weak to do, but I just can't buy that she's taking physical form. Still it was nice that they put in a line earlier with Toshio saying that he used to have rabbits, so we're not 100% sure if he was lying or not at the end. And I like how Satake is wearing white and the kid in the flashbacks wears black, like Mari. It was an amusing coincidence that Kayama gets killed for cheating, when he's together with Midori's actress in real life. His wife in the movie later gets killed like the others, the knife sticking out of her throat. この短いハモの。普通のナイフより軽く作られており、赤い針金の部分にテープを貼り付け、そのテープで直接首に固定します。ナイフの向きや角度など失敗の許されないとても気を使う作業。固定したら上から銀行皮膚を接着、さらに数
ただ怖い、えー、恐ろしいだけじゃなくて多分いろんな考えられる部分があるんじゃないかなと思うんで一度心をこうフラットにして見ていただくとすごくいろんな発見があるんじゃないかなと思います。演技的には一番最後にあの高彦にこう切り刻んで「まあ、やっと終わったよこれが最後だよ」っていうシーンはやっぱりどうしたらこう不気味に見えるかなとかそれはね一番力を入れましたね。ゲームではこんな人じゃなかったって言われたら一番冷めちゃうじゃないですかお客さん的にはで嫌だなと思ってたら設定は全然違うっていうことだったんで特になく、えー、とっても楽しませてもらっています。